Bob Marley was a Jamaican singer-songwriter and musician who was widely considered one of the most influential figures in all of music history. His unique sound blended elements of traditional African music, reggae, and ska to create an unmistakable style that moved millions around the world. He often infused his music with spiritual themes inspired by his Rastafarian faith. Unfortunately, Bob passed away in 1981 from melanoma cancer, but over the years, there has been one question that has consistently been brought up when talking about Bob's death, and that is, did the U.S. Central Intelligence Agency have something to do with it? And there's a ton of reasons why this question was being asked, so today, that's exactly what we're going to be talking about. So let's take a look at this theory and further examine the evidence that points towards possible CIA involvement in Bob Marley's death. So without further ado, let's go. Bob Marley was born in Nine Mile, St. Anne Parish, Jamaica, on February 6, 1945. His mother, Sedella, was Jamaican, and his father, Novel Marley, was a white British plantation overseer. Growing up, Bob was heavily influenced by his mother's Afro-Jamaican culture and his father's British heritage, which later shaped his unique worldview and musical style. At the age of 10, Bob moved with his mother to Trenchtown, a low-income area in Kingston, Jamaica. It was in Trenchtown where he discovered his passion for music, attending Stephanie Primary and Junior High school where he would meet his future bandmates Neville Bunny Livingston and Peter Tosh. Bob's childhood was marked by poverty and social unrest in Jamaica which deeply affected his music and his commitment to social justice. These experiences along with his Rastafarian faith would play a significant role in shaping his music and play a role in him becoming a cultural icon. Bob Marley's musical career begins in the early 1960s when he formed the Wailers with his friends Neville Bunny Livingston and Peter Todd. The group was heavily influenced by American R&B and soul music that was popular in Jamaica at the time, and they quickly gained a reputation for being a talented live act. In 1964, the Wailers signed with renowned Jamaican record label Studio One, where they recorded their first hit songs, including Simmer Down and One Love. These songs were a hit in Jamaica, and the Wellers quickly gained a large following. However, tensions within the group led to the departure of Livingston and Tosh in the late 1960s. Despite these changes, Bob continued to record and tour as the Wellers. In the early 1970s, the group achieved international success when they signed with Island Records, a British record label specializing in promoting reggae music to a global audience. Their 1973 album, Catch a Fire, included the hit song Stir It Up and Concrete Jungle and helped establish Bob Marley and the Wellers as one of the most influential and popular reggae acts in the world. Over the years, the Wellers released several critically acclaimed albums, including Burning in 1973 and Daddy Dread in 1974, which celebrated social justice, spirituality, and love. Bob Marley became an icon for the global peace movement, using his music as a means of promoting social change. During this time, Jamaica was experiencing political turmoil, including civil unrest, poverty, and institutional racism. Bob's music reflected these struggles in his lyric, which contained messages against the government and support for black power movements. His music became anthems for those seeking change within Jamaican society and around the world, furthering his influence as a cultural icon. Marley's songs became anthems for many Jamaicans who viewed him as a symbol of hope in difficult times. His lyrics spoke of freedom and justice for the voiceless and oppressed, something that resonated with people all around the world. However, this also made him a target for those in power who didn't appreciate his message, and this is where the theories begin. In 1981, the world mourned the loss of Bob Marley, who passed away at the young age of 36 from a rare type of melanoma cancer. However, many have since speculated that his untimely death was not just a matter of unfortunate circumstance, but the result of a conspiracy involving the CIA and Jamaican politics. During the Cold War, the U.S. government was deeply concerned about the spread of communism in the Caribbean and saw Jamaica as a key battleground for thwarting Soviet influence. To achieve this, the CIA began meddling in Jamaican politics, funding anti communist groups and politicians and engaging in propaganda campaigns to discredit their opponents. Bob Marley, a beloved and influential figure in Jamaica, found himself caught in the crossfire of this political turmoil. In 1976, Jamaica was preparing for a highly contested election between two major political parties. One was the incumbent Michael Manley's People's National Party, or the PMP, and the other was Edgar Sega's Jamaican Labor Party, or the JLP. Michael Manley had the support of Jamaica's communist neighbor Cuba, while Edward Sega was considered a friend of the United States and his agency. Manley's visit to Cuba to see how Fidel Castro was running his regime put him on the CIA's list of unfriendlies in the middle of the Cold War. On the other hand, Siga was known to be very close with the U.S., so much so in fact that in Jamaica, he was often referred to as Edward Ciaiga. Bob Marley found himself caught in the middle of this political tension, as his influence could have the power to affect and sway the entire election. 
I believe the CIA was using the Jamaican Labor Party as its instrument in the entire campaign against uh, the Michael Manley government. I'd say most of the violence was coming from the Jamaica Labor Party side, and behind them was the CIA in terms of getting the weapons in and getting the money in with all the propaganda guidance because there was a steady stream, a continuous campaign of propaganda against the Manley government. The weapons, uh, there was no problem that uh, with getting weapons in because the ganja smuggling was a perfect route for bringing weapons back into Jamaica from the United States. The CIA would look upon the radical political content of reggae music as dangerous because it would help to create a consciousness among poor people, among the great majority of Jamaicans. And of course, naturally, the climate was created for an attempt on Bob Marley's life. The purpose of all those activities of violence and armed robbery and murder, uh, coupled with the propaganda campaigns calling for the overthrow of the Manly government, naturally created a situation of terror, really, of tension, of uncertainty, of doubt, and fear. Marley, who had never expressed a political affiliation, was suddenly thrust into the political arena when both parties sought his endorsement. Marley, however, was wary of the risk that came with being associated with the political figure during such a volatile time. He planned a peace concert, a concert that he wanted to represent peace. Marley's idea was to bring both candidates on stage and have them shake hands, showing the good intentions of both of the leaders. But false rumors that he was supporting Manley began to circulate, and posters started appearing around Kingston suggesting that Marley was going to do the concert on the front lawn of Prime Minister Manley's home. Both parties did eventually agree to have the concert at a neutral site, but it was too late. Marley's perceived favor for Manley made him a target for the conservative right, which included the U.S. and the CIA. Aware that his life was in danger, Marley hired a security detail to guard his home 24-7. However, on December the 3rd, 1976, his guards were strangely absent when two carloads of gunmen came to kill him. They ran through his compound, shooting every everybody that they could find and Marley was hit along with his wife Rita who was shot in the head and a few of his crew members. Now the concert that he had booked in order to promote peace was supposed to take place just two days after this and most of Marley's friends begged him not to do the concert but his publicist was trying hard to convince him that he needed to go. Marley told his publicist that the only way he would go was with the machine gun in his hands and that's when his publicist told him your guitar is your machine gun and Marley agreed that he should go and perform for the concert. He performed in front of 80,000 people, singing and imploring the audience to be peaceful, saying, why can't we love one another? What is wrong with you, my brothers? It was a brave and vulnerable moment for Marley and marked the moment that he truly started to become a figure of peace. But 10 days later, Manley was re-elected and Marley, in fear for his safety, fled Jamaica for England. The question of who shot Bob Marley still remains a mystery to this day, but many speculate that the men who tried to assassinate Bob Marley that day were working on behalf of Edward Sega's Jamaican Labor Party, but whether Sega gave the direct order or not has never been conclusively proven. Now, you're probably aware in saying that Bob Marley's death wasn't caused by gunshots, and you would be right. Instead, he passed away due to cancer. Now, I needed to provide you guys with the last chapter of this story in order to fully explain this next theory as it builds off of that backstory. Without this context, the next part wouldn't make any sense, but here is how and why people think the CIA killed Bob Marley. It's been well documented that the CIA has an extensive file on Bob Marley. In fact, now declassified documents revealed that the CIA had a particular interest in Marley due to his popularity and influence in the country. The agency reportedly saw Marley as a potential threat to their efforts to influence Jamaican politics and viewed his music as a tool for spreading revolutionary ideas. When he passed away from cancer, theories started popping up everywhere questioning political involvement. Some suggested some type of poison was used on Bob that caused his skin cancer cancer and then led to his brain cancer, which led to his death. This theory suggests that Carl Kobe, son of the CIA director at the time, William Kobe, gave Marley a pair of soccer cleats that had a piece of radioactive wire inside of it that pricked his toes and caused the cancer. Now, conspiracy theorists have suggested that it would have been harder for Bob to get melanoma, the type of cancer that he had, due to his melanated skin. However, this theory was debunked by the Mayo Clinic in a study that they did that showed melanoma can still occur commonly even on dark skin, particularly in places 
areas that don't get much sunlight, like the toes, exactly where his was at. But that isn't the only theory. Another theory was that a man who helped him manage his diet was a former SS officer working with the CIA to poison him. Then there were the rumors of a CIA agent named Bill Oxley confessing with his last dying breath to killing Marley. But here's what I discovered looking through it all. The rumor about the radioactive copper that was left in his cleat can be traced back to a Daily Mail article. Daily Mail is known for its sensationalist headlines and tabloid style reporting so it's not the most trusted source. The rumor about the CIA agent Bill Oxley came from a now archived website called YourNewsWire.com which was closed down in 2019. The creator of YourNewsWire.com said when I closed YourNewsWire.com down in late 2019 and moved to News Punch, the focus on what we would cover editorially changed and it was decided that we would no longer cover unreliable conspiracies whilst also being much more responsible and fact-checking content before it's published. So, yeah, you really can't trust that source either. But this hasn't stopped the rumor from spreading. A 2018 reprint of the story in a Nigerian newspaper called Vanguard was shared by Buster Rhymes and T.I. on their Instagram accounts. A full year after getting shot and doing his performance at Smile Jamaica, Marley was playing soccer when he injured his foot. The injury seemed worse than normal and as the days continued, it became worse. He eventually went to a doctor for it. At the doctor, he discovered that he had acromelanoma, a form of skin cancer that developed under his toenail. Doctors advised Marley to get the toe amputated to stop the cancer from spreading but his strong faith opposed the procedure. In Rastafarianism, the body is considered a temple and removing a limb is considered a sin. Instead, he opted to have skin grafts performed and he battled his cancer for another four years. In 1980, Marley collapsed in Central Park while he was jogging. He played his last show in September of that year in Pittsburgh, marking his last live musical performance ever. After this show, he canceled all of the remaining tour dates that he had and flew to Germany for a unique diet-based treatment administered by Joseph Issels. Now this is the guy that they thought was responsible for killing Marley as well and the other conspiracy theory around this but the truth is that Marley stayed in Germany with Issel for eight months but the treatments just weren't working so he decided it was time to return to Jamaica. However on his flight home his condition worsened so they made an emergency stop in Miami and when they landed Marley was rushed to the hospital. On May 11, 1981 Bob was at the Cedars of Lebanon Hospital when he passed away. His son Ziggy was there with him when it happened and he said that Bob Marley's last words were money can't buy a light. Later that month Marley was given a state-sponsored funeral with Prime Minister Edward Sega saying his voice was an omnipresent cry in our electronic world. His sharp features, majestic looks, and prancing style of vivid etching on the landscape of our minds. Bob Marley was never seen. He was an experience which left an inedible imprint with each encounter. Such a man cannot be erased from the mind. He is part of the collective consciousness of the nation. Marley was buried in a chapel near his birthplace along with his Gibson guitar. In conclusion, Bob Marley's legacy as an influential musician and cultural icon cannot be overstated. Despite his untimely death at the young age of 36 from melanoma cancer, there have been persistent rumors over the years that his death may have been connected to the CIA's interest in Jamaican politics and their perceived threat of Marley's influence. However, as we've seen, there is little concrete evidence to support these theories. It's important to separate fact from fiction and focus on Bob Marley's incredible contributions to music and social justice. Marley's music continues to inspire and resonate with people around the world till this day and his message of peace and unity remains as relevant as ever. Anyways, that's it for the video guys. If you enjoyed the content, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe, tap the notification bell so you get notified every time I upload a video. As always, it's been fun rocking with y'all, man.